I'm here today uh, to share with you on a topic called STEM and uh, competency for the 21st century. Now, uh, many of us have uh, seen some uh, photo like this or something similar to this uh, recently, not long ago. And it is due to uh, some uh, statement made by some uh, leaders um, which say that uh, this could be the solutions for us to overcome the uh, virus that uh, we are facing right now. And uh, what happened next is that uh, I've said we have read some news um, about the, uh, um, some of the uh, uh, emergency call centers. Um, the, uh, in US, for example, the poison uh, control center um, has received a tremendous amount of phone calls um, people inquiring about whether um, disinfectants are actually safe to be uh, used inside our body to uh, eradicate the uh, virus from our body. And of course, um, many of these uh, manufacturers um, of this disinfectants came out and clarified, and this is not true. Now, another incident, incidence um, related to COVID-19 is that uh, there's a claim that 5G radio signals actually can spread coronavirus. And we know very well that uh, 5G is actually a radio transmission. It's a radio signal which is wirelessly transmitted over the air and it is actually totally a different thing compared to the virus itself, which is a biological um, entity. And as far as I know, um, it is not possible for a virus to be transmitted over a radio signal. But there are many people who believe in this. And this resulted in some uh, telecommunication infrastructures like the, uh, the, mobile, phone, the mobile phone um, uh, towers and some other facilities for telecommunications being destroyed um, by people who believe that uh, such kind of transmission uh, do bring the virus to them. Now, another um, phenomena that we have uh, also seen for quite some time is the anti-vaccine movement which happened in some part of the world and I believe that uh, in Malaysia too there are some people who believe in this. Uh, basically what they are saying is that vaccines are not good for us and therefore we should avoid and resist vaccinations. Now while we are trying very hard, the scientists are trying very hard to uh, develop vaccine for the, uh, um, the COVID-19 disease. Uh, but at the same time, there are people out there who claim that uh, vaccines are not good um, for human beings, and therefore we should resist that. So again, this is something that uh, is happening right now. And we call all this um, phenomena or whatever that we observe, um, these are conspiracy, conspiracy theories, right? All kinds of conspiracy theories happen, especially during this period of time where things are uncertain, right? When we are in crisis and when we do not understand the nature um, of, the, uh, of the pandemic that we are facing right now, uh, all kinds of conspiracy theories will emerge. This is quite uh, natural. However, I believe that the reason, another reason why all these conspiracy theories are thriving is because many of us in the society do not have sufficient, uh, strong awareness and belief in science. All right? We do not have this uh, embracement of science and appreciation of science. And that resulted in many of us believe in um, um, claims and statements made by some parties, um, which is actually against uh, or not in, 
in line with uh, the logics of science. Now, that brings us to the issue of what do we do right, if we want to have a society that, is, um, that has a stronger culture of science, that has a strong scientific thinking uh, in the whole society, and where leaders are more in line and embrace science, I think uh, we need to go into the uh, basics, which is the education. The education for the young generations. Here we are talking about the talents that we need, the, the human capital that we need for the 21st century. And I would like to relate this to the Sustainable Development Goals as uh, has been proposed by the United Nations. So the question is that how do we develop our talents in order for us to have a sustainable living in the world? And of course, to cultivate the uh, uh, scientific culture and thinking among the society. Now, um, in 2016, the uh, World Economic Forum came up with um, 10 competencies or 10, top 10 skills which um, humans would need or the young generation would need in order to be effective in the 21st century. Uh, these are problem, complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, people management, coordinating with others, emotional intelligence, judgment and decision making, service orientation, negotiations, and lastly, number 10, cognitive flexibility. Now, in 2020 now, I strongly believe that we need to add one more, which is scientific thinking. Now, let me, don't get me wrong if, uh, you know, by promoting scientific thinking, by promoting STEM educations. I think many of us in the society always take educations as a way to move forward, as the way to train and prepare our young generations so that they are prepared for the career, right? Successful career. So when we talk about STEM education, many of us would think that, oh, what can I, what can my son or daughters uh, you know, achieve in their career by learning science and technology. Now, I am not promoting STEM education here for career sake alone. I'm promoting STEM education as a way to achieve the competency which was mentioned just now in the 21st century. Now, give me an example. I would want to just share with you an example of what I mean by STEM education is not just for career. Now, we take one of the latest um, you know, development in our, um, uh, in our economy, e-commerce. Every one of us would have experienced uh, buying things online, right? Shopping online and so on. And we know about a company called Alibaba. Now, Alibaba has about 100,000 employees in which that probably not a big portion, uh, a fraction of this uh, 100,000 employees are the so-called hardcore s and workers, right? s and workers. M many of them probably would not be really involved in so-called hardcore s and workers, but they are doing in marketing or, and etc. However, the platform or the product or the system that was developed by this uh, small group of people, hardcore s and workers, can actually benefit 7 million online merchants and 700 million active users. Okay? And this is still growing. And we are talking about a huge multiplying effect. Could be up to a million. And such kind of multiplying effect implies that the, the, the nature of the technology nowadays is such that you just need to have um, small group of hardcore s and workers and they will be able to come up with something that a platform or a solution which will benefit the whole world, right? But does that mean that we are only, when we talk about STEM education, are we just talking about this small group of s and hardcore s and workers? My argument is no, because the remaining 
of the population which make use of this system or the platform or the solutions that create further create values for our economy, for our society, they should also be educated in STEM as well. So STEM education or science education is not just about career in science and technology. It is about skills and competency that we need to have to be effective in the 21st century. The competency that I just mentioned just now plus scientific thinking, right? Now, the next question that we want to ask is that how do then STEM educations can be, will be able to achieve uh, the competency that was just mentioned? The big question is how do we achieve it, right? Why, why, are we saying, why am I saying that uh, STEM education is the way to achieve this competency? Let me just share with you. Now, we all know for a very long time already that uh, interest in science and mathematics in schools has been declining gradually over the years. And these are some of the reports that you can actually find in the internet regarding the declining interest in STEM among the youngsters. Um, well, it is something natural because um, as human beings, we always try to uh, look for something that we think is easier, right? To achieve uh, the scores and the A's that uh, we are expected to achieve. And uh, very often, we find that youngsters find um, mathematics, for example, uh, something that is too boring and uh, difficult. And it is a subject that should be avoided as much as possible. And our education system is such that right from preschool to primary to secondary to tertiary and later on to uh, our career, we have been training or educating our youngsters, our young generations, uh, by equipping them with knowledge, by equipping them with the professional skills, the vocational skills that will enable them to pursue a specific uh, profession or career. Right? Now, very often, we have forgotten that there are some underlying competency for all these professions or, 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 or whatever career that um, that we will venture into. Now, these are the one that I just mentioned, plus scientific thinking. And how do we achieve this by just using, by just adopting the current system that we have? Now, I'm not saying that the current education curriculum and the systems uh, needs to be uh, are not effective and so on. They are effective. Uh, that is the reason why I'm standing here uh, as an engineer and I've gone through the system, but I do feel that we need to have additional approach on top of what we, are, we have been doing, okay? So what we actually need is that we need to add in um, additional um, approach in which that we promote experiential learning. Now what I mean by experiential learning is that we need to provide the youngsters with the uh, opportunity with the support and also the uh, platform for them to venture into real life examples uh, to apply what they actually learn in the school or in the universities. For example, if they learn about um, um, physics or mathematics, we should actually relate it to more real life examples, right? To give them the opportunity to work on projects um, whether it's group or individual, so that they can actually learn from the uh, experience itself and they will be able to appreciate um, whatever that's actually been taught in the school and in the curriculum. And this will also means that uh, we need to provide more um, opportunity outside the classroom, outside the conventional learning uh, environment. Right, in which that the students used to learn and, and, and work. So that is uh, point number one. The point number two that I also want to stress is that 
our system is such that we have been emphasizing too much on uh, specializations. I want to emphasize, I want to actually stress that um, we should actually go for broad base as far as possible, in which that STEM is also one of the key components uh, in the learning experience of the students, and we should push for more uh, STEM content even up to the tertiary education for all. Right? Now, um, over the past few months, we have been actually uh, um, uh, flooded with a lot of scientific terms which uh, related to COVID-19, in which that uh, laymen and even parents like me, uh, who is non-medical uh, uh, non, non personnel, um, you know, will be, um, is actually being um, puzzled with all these uh, terms and do not really know what it means. Um, I just share with you an example of uh, a learning experience which I've gone through with my own son uh, during the uh, uh, MCO period uh, related to COVID-19, uh, which is reflecting uh, real-life uh, examples of learning. Um, I read some articles in the internet and in the news media uh, talking about herd immunity. And uh, I'm an engineer, so uh, to me, this is something foreign. So I wanted to know more about this, and I actually uh, discussed with my son. I said, you know, do you know what is this, and why not we find out more? And there is a claim saying that uh, herd, humin herd immunity can be achieved if 60% of the population uh, are in, uh, vaccinated, right, or has this uh, immunity. So I... So I as, as a dad, I, you know, I always have the, um, um, you know, the intention to actually educate my son. So I give him a problem statement. I say, um, if the government intends to vaccinate the populations against the pandemic, uh, the, the COVID-19 uh, disease, um, can you do an, an analysis on what will be the uh, level of vaccination that we need for the populations right, in order to achieve herd immunity? So I won't go into the details of how we, we have uh, done this discussion, but uh, this is what my son has come up with. It's a mathematical, more, um, it's a very simple mathematical uh, um, problem, which you can actually do a simple uh, mathematical model, and there's nothing beyond what they learn in the school, uh, secondary school mathematics, right? So my son came up with this, and uh, sorry for his writing, it's not so uh, tidy, uh, but the conclusion is that we need to have about 75%. Right, of the uh, population vaccinated, uh, with some assumption that we make, la, which I would, not, I would not want to go into detail. Now, what I've actually shown is an example of a real-life problem uh, in getting the children to actually appreciate mathematics. Okay? And, uh, and these are some of the skills that I actually have uh, achieved um, from, from the very simple exercise I've gone through with my son. Uh, comp complex problem solving, critical thinking, judgment and decision making, and lastly, very important, is scientific thinking. Okay? Now, I will uh, end my uh, presentation here by uh, just uh, um, recapping what I've said just now. In order for us to actually achieve 21st century competency, very important for us in educating our, our, our children is actually through experiential, experiential learning, broad-based learning, and finally, content or curriculum that actually have strong and high STEM content. And uh, with that, uh, I thank you for your attention.